As our pet population ages, much like us, senility in dogs is becoming a pretty common diagnosis to make. The scary thing though, is that senility, dementia, or canine cognitive dysfunction often goes unrecognized or untreated. Join me as I go through the facts of senility, the diagnosis and progression of this disease, as well as how we can try and treat or even prevent it. Hi, I'm Dr. Alex from ourpetshealth.com, helping you and your pet live a healthier, happier life. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you're subscribed. Now, to start with, just how common is senility in dogs? Well, it's more common than you might imagine. Estimates vary from a whopping 60% of dogs over eight years of age showing signs to a more modest 14%, although that's still a huge number of dogs if you actually stop and think about it. The scary thing though is in the study which gave a 14% estimation, only 2% were being diagnosed. And this means that senility, more accurately known as canine cognitive dysfunction, is going undiagnosed in a huge number of senior dogs. So which dogs are at a higher dementia risk? Well, while the frequency of senility is in all dogs over the age of eight, as a dog ages, the risk becomes higher. In fact, the average age of those suffering with this debilitating disease is between 11 and 12 years old. The older your dog is, the more likely they are to develop senility. Now, it used to mean that this would only be very old dogs we'd be considering as suffering from dementia, but our dog population is getting older, and so it's not unusual for big dogs to live to about 14 years old, and smaller dogs maybe around 16. Senility has been shown to have little effect on life expectancy, and I'll discuss the prognosis in a little bit more detail later. And so this means that it's more important than ever that we recognize and treat canine cognitive dysfunction as soon as it starts to develop. So all dogs are at risk, whether they're big, whether they're small, male or female, every breed is at risk as well. So if you have a dog, this is definitely a condition that you need to be aware of. Now, what causes canine cognitive dysfunction? Well, senility in dogs is actually very similar to Alzheimer's disease in people. And dogs have actually been proposed as a model for the study of early stage Alzheimer's disease. This is in part due to the formation of what's known as amyloid plaques within the brain. And these are proteins which are deposited um, between nerve cells and it effectively stops them talking to their neighbors properly. So genetics plays a role in this, although we don't have any way to predict which dogs are at a higher risk of suffering from senility than others. There are other risk factors though, and they all relate to just general body health and lifestyle. So excess free radicals, which is um, formed due to inflammation um, or reduced antioxidant levels cause damage to the brain. Now, blood vessel narrowing also reduces the flow of blood to the brain, and that reduces the vital supply of glucose to nerve cells. And overall, this means that a dog who is unhealthy, who has a chronic inflammatory condition, maybe like um, dental disease, or is fed a diet low in antioxidants, may actually be at a higher risk of senility. So what are the symptoms of senility in dogs? Well, sleeping during the day and restless at night, disorientation in, in the home, anxiety or fear, a reduced interaction with the family, house soiling, aimless wandering or pacing, and an increased time spent sleeping are all common symptoms. Um, and one of the hallmarks of the repetitive behaviours that I've just mentioned is the fact that a dog with senility will easily be able to be distracted from performing them. So if, for example, your dog is pacing and won't stop no matter what you do, the chances are they have a different compulsive behaviour which is not a result of senility or dementia. Now, as you can see, some of these behaviours might easily be passed off as just normal age changes or of little concern, and that's partly where the problem of underdiagnosis comes in. If we stop and think about the impact they have on a dog's quality of life, though, you'll realise how much of an impact canine cognitive dysfunction can actually have. So how is senility in dogs diagnosed? Well, unfortunately, there's no simple test we can run to diagnose senility. It's what we call a diagnosis of exclusion. And that means that we rule out all other potential causes and we're left with senility as the only or the most likely diagnosis remaining. The more symptoms a dog is showing, the higher the chance senility is the cause, especially when they develop in an older dog. Now, one symptom should make us suspicious and two or more makes the likelihood of senility much higher. A useful word to remember to raise the possibility of senility in your dog is disha. So D is disorientation, I interaction reduction, S sleep-wake cycle changes, H house soiling, and A activity changes. 
Remember, these signs will often be very subtle to start with. So how do we treat dementia in dogs? Well, if you're thinking there's little we can do for a senile dog, then I've got great news. Brain function can be greatly improved in dogs suffering with senility. If it's caught early, a few simple changes can make all the difference. So in mild to moderate senility cases, that can be treated with um, antioxidant supplements like um, SAMI and milk thistle. Ginkgo biloba is a herb that may help improve um, brain blood supply and improve brain function. A diet rich in medium chain fatty acids or fatty triglycerides and they're converted to ketones which is an alternative energy source for the brain and also omega fatty acids may be beneficial which help improve antioxidant effect and then encouraging interactive play using puzzle toys and food puzzles and also just teaching your old dog new tricks for more serious senility though or where a more aggressive approach is preferred then drug therapy can be started and there are a few options here, although licensing depends on where in the world you live. So there's selegiline, which is an Alzheimer's drug, and propentophylline, which improves blood supply to the brain. Now in future, immunotherapy may be something that we're talking about. Um, it's, a, it's got evidence for working in Alzheimer's, and because of the close similarity with Alzheimer's disease, even more effective treatments may develop in the future. So, you know, really watch this space. So while the simple treatments could be started without consulting your vet, if you suspect your dog is becoming senile, you should definitely take them for a checkup because it might be that a completely different condition is causing the problems that your dog is showing. So an example would be that a reduced interaction could be due to arthritis um, or urinating in the house could be due to diabetes. There may also be reasons why certain supplements aren't suitable for your dog. So definitely getting them checked out by the vet is important. So with all this talk, what's the life expectancy on prognosis? Well, while we have several different treatment options available, there is no cure and like many senior dog diseases, dementia, senility or canine cognitive dysfunction is progressive. Some dogs will respond very well to a thorough treatment plan. Others, unfortunately, may not gain much or any benefit, especially if their disease is already ad advanced in itself. By itself, canine cognitive dysfunction does not affect life expectancy. It's not a fatal condition, and so your dog should live for as long as they would had they not developed this disease. The issue though comes due to quality of life. If your dog is constantly unsettled, if they're anxious, or even if they're fearful, if they're spending all their time pacing or disorientated, if they're constantly stressed by having accidents in the house or whenever they're left alone, then their quality of life might become significantly compromised. And this might all mean that you decide that the best thing for your dog is to end their stress or suffering. Euthanasia is never an easy decision and it's something that I discuss in much greater depth in my video all about the questions to ask when deciding if that is an appropriate decision to make for your dog. So if you have any questions please leave me a comment down below and if you have a senile dog then let me know what treatments you've tried and how they have or they, how they haven't helped your dog I'd really love to hear. But until next time I'm Dr. Alex from Our Pets Health, because they're family.